Ed in Richfield, Connecticut writes to me and he says, hey Paul, in the 1990s, God, that seems like so long ago, I, I became acquainted with iTunes and Pandora, but that's the extent of my digital music knowledge. Uh, I'm getting back into the hobby and I feel like Rip Van Winkle just waking up and been asleep for years uh, and it's now a new world. So here's my question. In very basic terms, what is streaming? What is a streamer? Does uh, that allow me to pick the albums, the songs I want to listen to that I choose? I understand a DAC is a digital to analog converter, but simply speaking, why do I need the DAC? On behalf of the dummies of the world, help! <laughs> Give it to me in crayons. Okay, so, uh, and I apologize. I know in most people that watch this channel, this is going to be just too many crayons because you already know what streaming is. But, you know, I like answering some of these questions because honestly there are so many people out there that are confused by what I might consider a simple thing or you might consider a simple thing and it's good to help people understand what in the heck something is and why do we need it. And I think of all the time I spend making these videos for you I think I enjoy that the most, just trying to help people understand what's going on. So forgive me if you already know this, but anyway, let's get into it. So streaming, yes, uh, you definitely have it right. Unlike Pandora and iTunes, um, streaming is a kind of like a jukebox, if you will, all right, where you can push a button you don't know, even have to put a quarter in. You pay the quarters monthly. <laughs> you put the money in, you go down the list and you say, ah, I want to hear that, and the jukebox plays it, right? And that's essentially streaming. And I'm going to tell you how it kind of works, how the system sort of works, and then we'll get to your other question about a DAC. Pandora, on the other hand, is a radio station. And there's a big difference. So it, a lot of it has to do with licensing. So an internet radio station plays all kinds of great music. So let, let's say that Pandora has the same musical library as a streaming service as you might find at Amazon or at Tidal or Cobuzz. Those are big streaming services, right? And they may have exactly the same libraries. The difference is Pandora pays almost nothing relative to what a streaming service pays and charges. Uh, to the musicians, right? So Pandora, you don't have a choice. You could choose songs like John Legend, but you can't pick a John Legend song. So you can pick songs like John Legend and, he'll, and Pandora will choose a John Legend song and then they'll choose something else that's like John Legend. But you don't actually have a choice in what you listen to and that license that Pandora pays for that is very much lower than what it would cost if you said, I want to hear that specific song. So streaming is a service like a pay-for-view movie. You know, and I am still boggled beyond anything I can tell you that today I can go onto my Apple TV or Comcast and I can go through a million movies and pick the one I want to watch, hit a button, and within seconds, I'm watching that movie. Me! I'm the only person in the world out of seven billion people that is watching that movie at that time in my space. That's extraordinary. The technology behind that is just, I mean, I used to be boggled that I could pick up my cell phone and just go boop, boop, boop and talk to my friends in India. That's pretty amazing. But this is even more amazing. And like that, streaming music is the same thing. Instead of a movie, it's a song. So if you're in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and you want to hear Hotel California by the Eagles, if you sign up for the streaming service, you're going to go onto your app and you'll find it, you'll hit a button, and it plays as if you had the CD 
in your library, and that's streaming. So, and you pay a service fee for that, and the musicians get a quarter of a cent, and probably not even that much. I mean, it's so one of the whole reasons we started Octave Record was trying to get some money into musicians' hands, but that's a whole different thing. Okay, why do you need a DAC? Well, you have to have a DAC because streaming is completely digital. It just, there's no such thing as analog streaming. So it's all digital. So we need to convert the digits to something we can hear, which is analog. And while many streamers, which is a device that allows the playback over the internet of chosen tracks, has a DAC probably built into it, it's probably not the best sounding product. So depending on your level of what you'll want out of it, like in my case, I would never use a built-in DAC unless it was from a company that I trusted, and there are very few of those. So in our case, we, we will have a streamer, and that does all the work of fetching and getting and helping you choose, uh, or you know, making it possible for you to choose the, the, the music. And then I'm gonna give you a digital stream, and then we need something really good sounding to reproduce that on a high-end stereo system. But if you don't have a high-end stereo system, if you're just starting out, you don't need a DAC. It's probably built in, okay? Good luck with it. Welcome back, Rip Van Winkle, <laughs> and I'll talk to you later. Bye.